Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, the Ultimate Bean Man. And I'm here today with my homeboys. And we're going to do something a little bit different in this channel. We're going to be talking a little bit more about comics here and there. But to do a better description of that, I'm going to have my boy Crimson Chris explain it all. All right, guys. So this is what we like to call the Weekly Rex, which stands for Weekly Recommendations. It's all about comics. It's all for you guys. This is our personal opinions. You guys leave comments below. Let us know what you think. Tell us if we're doing a good job. Tell us if you agree with what we have to say. Tell us if you don't agree with what we have to say. We listen to all you guys. We love your comments. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about a few comics, our few favorites, uh, things we've been reading this week. And we're going to let you guys know exactly what's going on. And first off, we're going to build it up. This new guy right over here. What's going on, guys? Jules yeah. True. Oh, yeah. Jules True. He's going to give you his comics of the week. <clears throat> okay. This week I read Uncanny Avengers 3, the FF3. Avengers 3 and Uncanny X Force number one. Nice. It's threes and a lot of one. A lot of threes, number one. Uh, <laughs> so, what are we going to start off with first? Uh, we'll start off with Avengers 3. All right. Uh, Can I ask, how's the art in this comic? The art is fantastic. Anyone, if you read uh, Opena's art during the Dark Angel saga with Uncanny X Force, shit is awesome. I don't know what the hell this guy's on. Probably a lot of acid. But uh, the art in this issue, it's amazing, man. Can be completely real about that one. So ultimately, what's the story? What's going on here? I see Iron Man, there's Spider Woman, Hawkeye, and Spider Man on the so, corner. So Jonathan Hickman, for those who didn't know, did FF before this whole Marvel Now thing, and he likes to use a lot of characters. There's a lot of motherfucking Avengers in this issue. Basically, Cap and Iron Man are like, we need to get bigger, and they almost die, and so. Cap goes to Earth, comes back with like 30 Avengers, and uh, ends kind of the opening storyline. And the story's fan-fucking-tastic. Jonathan Hickman, really usually a sci-fi writer, which is interesting. He took on the Avengers. He's kind of giving them a sci-fi twist. But it's definitely a good story. Definitely check it out. Awesome. What's your rating for this? I give this definitely buy it in the single. Go yes. ahead and buy it in the single. Don't wait for trade. Buy it in the single. Yay. Definite. What we got up here next? Next we have FF. Three. How's this bad boy looking? Uh, the art is absolutely awesome. I am going to say, though, uh, Michael Alred is not for everybody. He's got kind of the classic 50s twang to them. Uh, I don't know if you, any of you read, but he did the Atomics. He did Mad Man. He did a bunch of like weirder comic books in the early 90s and late 2000s. So he's got kind of a more old school taste. It's not the most impressive art, but it's classy. Okay. So what's the story of it? Uh, Matt Fraction's writing it. For those who don't know, he also writes Hawkeye. He did a bunch of other Avengers titles. He's also writing Fantastic Four. The writing is awesome. It's really on point. It's not the most impressive writing, this is what I'm going to say. It's definitely a more realistic writing. He has a very honest way of writing. It makes the characters feel more relatable. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your rating for this bad boy? Uh... I like this title a lot, but I don't think it's for everybody. I say for most, it's wait for the trade. I wouldn't say buying the singles. I'm gonna keep buying it the singles, but it's definitely it's more of you want it. Like it's got to be a personal like. It's not the most impressive issue though. Okay. Or series. All right. What we got up next? Next we have Uncanny Avengers three. Ooh. Ooh. I see that the Red Skull's up here. Oh, yeah. He is fucking shit up in this issue. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the art? The art. John Cassidy is awesome. Only problem with this guy is he takes for fucking ever to draw everything. You read Astonishing X-Men when Joss Whedon was writing it. Ooh. Love Joss Whedon. Uh, he takes fucking forever. It wasn't even Josh's fault. Just John Cassidy just takes for fucking ever. The... Art is amazing, though. I'm going to go ahead and say that. This issue, it's the best it's ever looked. Got a lot of detail. Got a lot of fucking detail. He and really no cared about so this issue. Seriously, if you're in the first two issues, you're like, oh, he didn't even give a fuck about issue one and two. He cared about issue three. He really cared about issue three, though. So, what's the story in this video? Uh, Rick Morander. Big, big fan of Rick Morander. He wrote uh, Uncanny X-Force before the reboot. He is kicking ass with this title in that, spoiler alert, uh, he basically gave the Red Skull Professor X's brain, and now Red Skull is literally ruining this, this new Avengers team. It's half X-Men, it's half Avengers, it's all awesome. It's a fucked up title. Do not let your kids read this title. 
It's <laughs> awesome, though. <laughs> nice. What's your ultimate rating for this? Ultimate, do not wait for the trade, because God knows when that's going to come out. Because the singles are taking forever to come out. This is buying the singles. Buy it while you can. God forbid this title finishes at some point in time. You see it, you better buy it. Buy it. <laughs> so what we got? <laughs> My last one of the day is Uncanny X-Force number one. Number one. Ooh. Number one. Number one. A lot of things. Threes, finally my number one. Yes. So what we got here for the art? The art is fucking incredible. Ron Gardy, I don't know who you are. I feel like you've done something else that I've read at some point in time. Because you got that kind of art that's awesome, but kind of forgettable. It's fucking awesome looking, though. Seriously, open this bitch up. This shit is good. A lot of good colors. God damn, the art's getting this one. <laughs> <laughs> this nice. is like best art of the day. For me. Look at that. Just, th this Just look at that. They're all doing the we'll watch, I don't know, I don't know if you can see up. this really well. We this. We'll post a better picture. If not, Google Maps that shit. Or Google Images. Google, Google Maps. Google Maps. <laughs> Google, find Maps, out Maps. Nice. Google Maps. Nice. Google Maps. It'll, it'll help you find how good this shit is. Or the nearest comic book store. So what's you. the story in this? Dude, uh, Sam Humphreys, he's kind of bounced around a couple titles. Understand, it is not Rick Remender's Uncanny x -Force. They make that very obvious in the first couple panels. Uh, so far in the story, they're just kind of seeing what Psylocke and Storm, who's now newly divorced, uh, is doing now. Oh. So, oh yeah, for those who don't know, spoiler alert, after the whole Avengers vs. X-Men thing, uh, Mr. Wakanda King... Black Panthers tells her to get to step in. So she's like, I'm single, so I got a mohawk again, which I know you guys fucking love. love Storm with the mohawk. Love Storm, love Storm, Storm, with, Storm with the mohawk. If she was a real character, I would be like all over that right now. Yeah, seriously, all over she that. Electrocute me, freeze my eyes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. It's a whole new cast of characters. Bishop's fucking back. For those who have been like, where the fuck is Bishop? Oh, he's back in this issue. Got uh, dreads again. Got dreads again. Got the beard. He's looking extra fucking grizzly. Uh, <laughs> new cast. I have no idea what the fuck is gonna happen. This issue just gave me a bunch of questions, no answers. Totally gonna get it. Uh, the next issue though, it's, it's, it, I have no idea. It's not Rick Remender's. I'm getting X Force now. I'm gonna be completely honest. Awesome. So what you gave me a rating for it? Okay, so I'm gonna give it two ratings. I have no idea where it's gonna go. The writing's good, not impressive, but good. I would probably, if I didn't know what's gonna happen, if issue two, I'll tell you. Right now, buy it in a single because the art's really good, the writing's pretty good, but I'm afraid it might be a wait for the trade. We'll wait and see what issue two's like. All That's right. That's what I'm saying about that. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Mr. True. The true man. The true now man. we're going to move it on over to this guy, the Crimson one. This guy. And he's got a little stack here. There's a comic right here I'm kind of interested in. So, oh, yeah. Why don't you go on and get into that? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right, guys. What we got first? So I'm going to start it off with uh, the Indestructible Hulk in Volume 3. Can't break that motherfucker. No. You cannot. Okay. You cannot. Oh, man. So, guys. I'm gonna just before he even ask me a question to let you guys know right now. Indestructible Hulk is hands down, without a shadow of a doubt, my favorite Marvel title right now to date. It's so good. It's so good. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what is the art news? What is the art? What, okay. are, what we got looking here? Because right. there's there's War Hulk there I breaking. Guys, I know you guys can't see this very well, and we'll post a picture up so you guys can can take a better look. But the artist for this is Lionel Yu. Lionel Yu is a beast. He's a Bugger beast. Guys. He's a beast. Okay, his art is fantastic. All right, I, I can't compliment it enough. It's the Hulk like he should look. He's got his little buzz cut again, but he doesn't look like freaking. He doesn't look like a like a Mongol. He doesn't look like Jason Voorhees this time. He looks huge. He looks scary. He is the right shade of green. He looks mean as crap. Like he, who are the Ninja Turtles? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? The Ninja who, who are the Ninja Turtles? Like the, whole, the art oh in this God. is is excellent. Nice. The art's excellent. Okay, what's the story? The story in this. Let me tell you guys. The story in this is one of the better Hulk stories I've read so far. Uh, layman's terms, the story is about. Bruce Banner deciding that he's going to do something better with his life, which is to join S.H.I.E.L.D. because if he joins S.H.I.E.L.D., then he has the resources he needs in order to make things to better the world. 
He's saying, you know, people are smart, like uh, you, you, you have Tony Stark, who's smart. You have Reed Richards, who's smart, the Illuminati doing their thing. They don't invite me because I'm the Hulk. Well, let me tell you something. I can do stuff too. I can create things. I can make the world a better place. And he, he one of the best lines ever in the comic book comes from the first issue of The Indestructible Hulk. And he says, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if my tombstone didn't say Hulk smash. I was just like, so good. the writing, the so writing, good. so good on so this. Good. The writing's nice. so good. The so story's good. excellent. I'm loving it. Like, I, I, could, I could talk for days. I could talk for days. Well, let's just get to the bottom line here. What is your indestructible rating for this? My indestructible rating is if you don't buy the singles for this, you're a terrorist. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> it, you you want this in your house, you want it on your shelf, you want it in your hand, you want it in your backpack, whatever. You You're, want it on you naked. You want it on you naked. Your kids can read it if if their reading skills are up to par. You do not want it on them naked. You don't want it on them naked. We shouldn't even be talking about them and nakedness anyway. Buy it. Buy the singles. Definitely don't wait for the trade. Don't read it in the store. Pick it up in the store. Buy it. Go home and read it. And keep reading it. And buy all the singles. That's what I got to say about that. Who we got next? Next up, we have my second favorite title right now for Marvel. Marvel Now. Which is Captain America. I've read Captain America issue 3. I actually just finished this not too long ago. It is... It's interesting. It's interesting. It so is interesting. From the look of it, 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 it looks like half punching a baboon. Oh, yeah, it kind of looks like. It's so, like an what, what, yeah, what is the art in this bad boy here? The art. All right, guys. So the art is from John Romita Jr. It is not the old '90s John Romita Jr. art that we're used to. It's not the Spider-Man art. For all those people who read Kick Ass, that is the art we are getting delivered to us in all the issues for this. Um, um, it's very loose. The colors are pretty vivid. It's gritty. It's grimy. It's a little darker than you thought. It would be, especially for a Captain America title. Um, but bottom line, the art's good. John Romita Jr. is impressing me. Uh, it may not be for everyone used to his father. You know, that, that, he's not going to be his dad. He's not going to be like he was in the 90s. He's not going to be like he was in the Hulk, uh, World War Hulk, or, or Planet Hulk. He's not going to be like that. He is doing his thing right now. This is his style. He's got a good colorist on his team. Whoever's doing the inks are doing it in a way where it makes sense. I like it. Personally, so what is your American rating? Oh, what is the story-wise and whatnot? That you oh, got the story. Going on? The story for this is a little different from what we're used to. We know the story of Captain America. We know that he's the good boy soldier who's been frozen in time. He's awake now in our our time. This story goes back to his past a little bit, but it's not stuck in the past. It's just flashbacks. We see how his life started. We see him as a child. We see his parents. We see his father, his mother, how his ch childhood was. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It's it's really not. It's really not. Um, but the story of this is, uh, <laughs> without any spoilers, Cap gets sent to another place that he is not used to, another dimension, Dimension Z, I think. Yeah, Dimension Z. Dimension mm. Z, and and he's protecting a child in this, a little boy, and the, whose child this is, I'm not going to give it away. It's excellent. Uh, the story is worth it. It keeps me intrigued. I'm enjoying it. So what is your red, white, and blue rating for this? I give this, I give this five Captain America shields out of five. Uh, definitely pick up the singles for this. Do not wait for the trade. You want to read it. The writing is good. The art is just good enough to keep you interested. Definitely pick up the singles for this. Don't wait. Nice. Oh yeah. And what we got here, just from the oh, look of right it, it's in, got guys. me, uh, got me creeped out. Uh, absolute. What That's that wonder right can here. Can we stop it? What? Did you just shimmy? Directly? I shimmy. He shimmy. He shimmy. He had the goosebumps. I had goosebumps and I shimmy. Mm. Uh, we have Batman. Batman. Uh, <laughs> We like to call it Batman proper for the comic fans. They know what that means. Batman proper issue 16. We'll actually do a side video later on letting you guys know about Batman in its entirety. Today we're just going to be talking about issue 16. Um, what questions you got for me? The question I have is... I'm looking at the front cover here. What is the art in this bad boy? Because Joker's all dressed up. There's Robin outfit. What What is going on here? What, is, what? There's a lot going on. The Joker is terrorizing the Bat family. He's back. He's been gone for a couple of years. He is... He's scary. He's gotten his Buffy's face cut scary. off. He, he stole his cut off face back and he's got it like stapled to his face. It's weird. He looks gross. Every time he smiles, I want to cry. 
The art is excellent. I can give you the art in two words. Two words. And those two words are Greg Capallo. Remember those words. Google those words. Know those words. Greg Capallo is killing it. He's doing Batman. It's not the Jim Lee Batman that we've been used to, like the early 2000s, late 90s. This is a new Batman. This is the Batman that we want to see. It's grimy. It's gritty. Batman has scruff. You know, he doesn't have the big hairy chest like we saw. You know, it, it, it's dark. And and I definitely recommend it. Greg Capallo is really killing it. His Joker is freaking terrifying. So scary. If you guys remember uh, Mask of the Phantasm, how scary he was in that animated series, that animated movie, it reminds you of that. It takes you back to that. But his face has been cut off, and he's just kind of wearing a cut off face on top of his face. It's excellent. I love the art. Yay. What is the story that's going on? All right, guys. So since we're just talking about issue 16, uh, without trying to give away too much, uh, the Joker has, has lured Batman into Arkham Asylum, and he's cleaned it out, except for the people he wants to be in there just to mess with Batman. He has people that he is terrorizing in there, uh, getting inside Batman's head. In this issue, he is so far in Batman's head that every time he has a thought, he laughs. Not literally, but that's what's going on. He is so embedded in, in Batman's brain. Um, he's giving Batman an ultimatum at the end of this issue. The end of this issue, when I read it, I was like, please, God, just let it be next month. I want to read the next issue. <laughs> so bad. Next issue, issue 17, is supposed to be the culmination of everything that's been happening with all the tie-ins. It's supposed to be the end of everything. We'll see how it goes. But the story on that is really good. Scott Snyder is killing it. He is killing it. He is the writer for Batman right now, and I stand by what I say. What is your serious rating for this? Serious Batman rating boy? for this. That's simple. Buy the singles, don't wait for the trade, don't read it in the store. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm done. Buy it. He's done. Game. <laughs> and up next. Jeez. Last but not least, guys, we have Batgirl, which is the underdog right now for me of the DC world. Mm -hmm. uh, Batgirl issue 16. Like I said, we'll do we'll do another video later when we're talking about Batgirl as an entirety. We'll let uh, Mr. B do that for you guys. His ultimate way. We got you. All right. So, what is the art here? Because uh, Batgirl's looking a little mean here. Yeah, I know you guys can't smile. see that, but we'll, we'll fix that in the video for you. Uh, uh, the art for this is so good. It's a... Uh, it's, um, Ed right now. Ed Beans? Ed Beans. Yeah, Ed Beans or is doing Bennis. it. Yeah. Or Bennis. I think it's Bennis. Bennis. Ed Bennis Bennis. is doing Bennis. it. Sorry for pronouncing Sorry. it wrong. Yeah. Sorry about that. He, his art is fantastic. He's drawing Batgirl like she should have been drawn in the 90s, like she should have been drawn in the 80s. She is a great character. She's, the art is just excellent. The colorist is good. The, the, the inker is good. The letterer is freaking good. It's just, it's just good. You can't go wrong with it. I'm enjoying it. This issue was fantastic. It was creepy. It was everything you needed it to be. Great. The <laughs> art. Love it. What is the story? All right. This? The story for this, just issue 16, the story is uh, uh, what's happening right now with, with Barbara. Um, spoiler alert. The Joker proposed to her uh, two issues prior to this. This is the actual wedding scene and what's happening with that and, and what's happening a little bit after that. Uh, he's proposed. He actually proposed to Barbara with Barbara's mother, Barbara Sr.'s finger that he cut off, that he's walking around with. Um, it's crazy. He's, he's got Barbara's mom strapped to a chair with a nail bomb under it, and if she says no, he's going to blow her sky high. So she obviously has to say yes unless she wants her mom to be blown to bits. Um, it, it's crazy. Her brother makes an appearance in this. Spoiler alert again. Yes, uh, uh, James the Jr. is in it. And he's crazier than ever for everybody who knows who he is. The story is excellent. It is Gail, Gail Simone, or Simon? Gail Simone? Simone. 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 I love you. I love you. I don't know wherever who you, you are, are. Wherever you are. I have no idea what you look like. Crimson Chris 335. Jules True. True. We love you. We love you. We love you. I just, will marry you someday. Please. If you're not already married. If you're not already married. If you, you are you married, yeah. just, just leave them. I know this looks bad, but... By the way, that's how they start every single issue of yeah. Batgirl. I know this looks bad. But. I know this looks bad, yeah. But uh, I, I will make It's so good. I, Batgirl, so the way that it's written is so good. Batgirl talks to herself. And it, it's humorous, but it's also serious at the same time. She doubts herself, but she tells you why she doubts herself. Love it. 
Awesome. So, what is your bad girl rating for this? My bad girl rating, I know you guys heard this rating before. You've heard it plenty of times. Don't make the mistake that I made. I made the mistake of waiting for the trade for these. That's the wrong thing to do. You need to buy the singles. You need to pick that up in the store, add it to your box. If you don't have one, make one just so Batgirl can be in it. It's excellent. It's one of my favorite DC titles out right now. Batman proper, Batgirl, they are doing it perfectly right now. Definitely go ahead and pick up those singles. If you can't find the singles, go ahead and pick up the trade and continue with the singles. The writing is good, the art is good. Even the Zero issue is good. Pick it up. Pick it up for sure. Awesome. Apparently, the B-Man also has some books of his own to been checking out here and there and I've been reading that these boys have been, you know, handing to me. Yeah. I have also been checking out Flashpoint. You may not be able to see it, but you will be seeing it. Um, from what I know here, it looks, it's a pretty good title. All it's, right. It's, it's pretty good. That's all I got to say is... Is yep. there anything about it? Yeah, we, we, we got, got a couple of questions. We got a couple questions. We got a couple of questions. Got a couple of questions what we got? Tell us and, and the viewers about the art in this, please. The art yes. is well detailed. I don't even know. I wish I could draw this good. Andy. I mean, Andy Kubert. Uh, ooh. Why? You make me look bad, dude. <laughs> I, I can't even explain That's it. That's a hard I, thing I to really, do, Yeah, it is. For the ultimate one... You're making me look bad. You need to stop. Stop. Quick. That's all it's true. You got a question as well, don't what you? you guys I was going to say, didn't Andy Kubert just die? I think he did just die. He did? He just died. And he still made you look bad. Oh. He made you look bad, dog. Rest in peace, Rest man. Rest in peace, Andy. Um, you really... Uh, what did you, what'd you think about the story? What, what I think story? about the story, the way it starts, it's like Flash wakes up. And he doesn't know what's going on. His mother's alive, which we all know in the original Flash that his mother died. Oh, nice. So, And he has to figure out what's going on. He feels like he's in a bad dream. But eventually he finds out that the reverse Flash put him in this other dimension just to make it to where the, the reverse Flash never existed or whatever. Or Flash forgets everything. So he ends up finding Thomas Wayne, not Bruce Wayne, but he finds... Thomas Wayne, Batman. Excellent twist. Yeah, it was it was a real big twist to me. And all this, the original Justice League, they're all just broken up. And they're even fighting each other. Aquaman and Wonder Woman. It's, it's psychotic. It's ridiculous. It's a war, pretty much. I was Superman in that. So, the way I saw Superman, Superman was all scrawny and whatnot. He hasn't seen the sun. They kept him in prison because I guess they know he's Superman. Or they just thought he was just some illegal alien. Like, right, right. we all know the Superman story. But he was pretty good. And we saw it. If, if you read this book, you'll find out how they use Superman here. Cool. Okay, right, so man. Uh, we actually, we both have a question for you. And that question is, uh, well, uh, what we got? Yeah, what would you give this what rating? Give this book? Uh, What's the rating? How many, how many uh, lightning bolts would you give this? How many book? lightning bolts I would give it? Four I would five. give it about four lightning bolts. Four out of five? Four it's a five. four out of five. All I right. mean, it's a very interesting book. It gets you going, and it makes you want more, but as you get towards the end, you're like, you're satisfied. You're pretty much satisfied. You, can't, right. you can't get mad. And this is so. what starts the new 52, as we yeah. know it. It sure sure did, did, so Noted. pick it up. All righty. So you got, you got another one for us, a new one that you just finished, right? Uh, look at this. Look at this. Uh, this is actually from, uh, from Image Comics. It was a little while ago, for those who didn't know. It yeah. is called The Astonishing Wolfman. Astonishing Wolfman, written by Robert Kirkman. Our homeboy, Robert Kirkman. And uh, good old Jason Howard. Jason Steve Howard Art. Oh, Alright, man. Jason Howard, where are you? Where are, yeah, where are you? Yeah, seriously, what are you doing? Where'd you go? What happened to you, man? Why? The title... So we'll I'll find you. So we'll keep it going. Meanwhile, we'll keep it going. Meanwhile, I got a question so what for you. Got I'm looking Chris? at this cover. I've actually read the book. I scanned through it again, time and time again. But I want to know what the Ultimate B Man thinks about the art. What the Ultimate B Man thinks about the art? If you have read several of Robert Kirkman's books, and we're talking about Chew and and even this bad boy right here, you should know what you're getting yourself into. And as I look right now, the art is beautiful. 
It's Guys great. It's really good. It's real simple. It's nothing real detailed such as DC Comics and whatnot. It's not like that. It's real simple. Anybody can do it. That's all I can say. Even I can do it. <laughs> that's how that's how the art is, and I love it. But you like it? it I love out. it. I enjoy it. It's a comic to be of a comic. Okay. If you can kind of understand what yeah. I'm saying here. Yeah. I'm trying to be all poetic. Yeah. 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 My next question to you is... So Robert Kirkman, as we all know, is a man of many words. My question to you is, what is the story like? The story here, we got a homeboy, can't quite remember the name, mm -hmm. but this guy here, he gets bit by some rabid animal, and then he ends up like finding out that he turns into a werewolf. His family finds out, his wife is like, oh my god, you're a werewolf, and la la la. But... As we come to find out, he ends up joining up with a vampire, and he ends up having to teach him how to do all his moves and whatnot, how to transform more better and to control the wolf within him. He even meets up with other superheroes, and as you get towards the book, he ends up it, it it's you get it's a twist. It's a real big twist. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's a twist. All I can say is. <laughs> but that's about it. Does not trust vampires. No. Does not trust vampires. No, they they, right. they look nice, but mm -mm. no. All right. Sorry. So, so, let us know, man. What do you what do you think about this rating? Would you recommend this to other people? I would recommend it to anybody who is really interested and is a fan of Robert Kirkman. Mm -hmm. It is most likely going to be a buy. A buy. Yeah, so it's, it's not it, even it, just a read. It's, it's a not buy. even a read. It, it is a buy because this is just the first volume, and there's plenty of other volumes to come. But this one, especially if you want to get started on something new, a different Wolfman, this is it. Superheroes, werewolves, vampires, you name it, it's in this book. And you heard that straight from the Ultimate B-Man himself, the guys. The Ultimate One, ah, uppercut to death. All right. So anyways, we're going to cut it right here. I hope you guys stay tuned next week. Please. As we'll bring in more comics for you guys to check out, more recommendations for you. More trades. More, more trades. trades. <laughs> sure you can just yeah just uh, fist bump yeah as always guys i'm the ultimate one the b-man and crimson chris and also jules true and we will see you guys next time all right guys